Hey everybody, Davey Dog here. Dave Foster, Fontaine family, the real estate leader. I'm a full-time professional realtor in the state of Maine, and I help my clients' dreams come true through the purchase and sale of real estate. Today I'm outside the Greater Androscoggin Humane Society, and we're gonna to talk to Katie Lisnick, who's the executive director, about some of the changes she's made over the past two years, and what kinds of challenges and dreams she has for the future of this great institution in Lewiston, Maine. All right, so uh, yeah, so we're here today with Katie Lisnick, who's the executive director of the uh, Greater Androscoggin Humane Society. And Katie, welcome. Thank you for um, taking some time out today. I know you're really busy. I know that, you know, people, uh, animals are near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. And um, I know that you just got here a couple of years ago. So tell us a little bit about what brought you here and how you got here. Sure. So I am a, a native Mainer and we, I've been doing a lot of uh, national level work. Prior to coming here, I worked for the Humane Society of the United States, doing a lot of companion animal public policy, uh, animal sheltering work, and had been living in Vermont for a few years while my husband went back to school. And we really wanted to come back to Maine because we love it and uh, just wanted to be you know, back home. Nice. So when this job opened up, I was really excited. I knew the people who were involved. I had known our previous director here and applied and was really happy to be able to, to come here and work in such a wonderful community. That's great. Yeah, and we're glad to have you. So it's been a couple of years. You've, you've kind of figured out what's going on, right? A little bit. You made a couple <laughs> of changes. And then so um, you spoke to our Rotary Club this morning and talked about setting up the, the um, sort of a template to run ideas through for the next you know, for the future, just make sure that you're on track to do the things you want to do. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Last year, and it was really towards the end, about October of last year, we started doing a strategic planning process. Mm -hmm. And normally that's going to set you up with a plan to last, you know, five, six years. And we were working on that. We were all excited. Mm. And then COVID hit. Right. And we sort of said, well, should we pause? Should we wait? And we said, no, we're going to keep going because this is reality. Yeah. We've got to deal with this and figure out how do we best address it? How do we move forward? Right. So we continued with our planning process and we now have our plan. And, you know, we're being a little bit more reasonable. We got UPS running by. Um, we're trying to be a little bit more flexible in that we're planning a couple of years out. Yeah. We're not thinking, you know, this is going to last us a full five or six years because right. who knows what the world's going to look like then right. and what the needs are going to be for our animals in our community. But this is going to help us, you know, any new requests come in, we can put it up against the plan and say, is this, you know, the direction we're headed in? Is this going to get us to our goals and our mission? And if so, we'll incorporate it. And if not, you know, we'll we'll keep moving ahead with our Yeah, goals. and that's great in any business, you know, to be able to know where you want to go so that if it makes sense or not. Absolutely. So good for you for that. And you had talked about a little bit, which surprised me this morning, about the, um, the, the effect it's had on the dogs. Um, one of the, whether the lack of dogs coming in from around here mm -hmm. has to do with COVID or it's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. And two, the uh, southern dogs coming up. Tell us a little bit about what, what's going on there. Yeah, so, you know, we've been doing pretty, pretty effective spay and neuter for a long time here mm -hmm. in New England. You know, veterinarians, there's low cost clinics. You know, we've, most everyone has had their pet spayed or neutered. And because of that, we're seeing fewer local dogs having puppies, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. in need. And our numbers here at the shelter for dogs that need shelter and care have gone down and down each year. Huh. And that was just a trend that we've been seeing, you know, for the past 10 or 15 years. It's been quite a while. And so we were working with Southern shelters and rescues to bring dogs and puppies up from down south and from the Midwest, where spay neuter didn't catch on quite so early. And they're still struggling with too many dogs mm -hmm. and puppies that need homes. And yeah. so we've been able to bring them up and, and we love doing that program. And it fills a need in our community for, you know, wonderful dogs. Mm -hmm. And COVID has really changed that. We're finding that there's just, I think it's, people have really stepped up. And in the Southern communities, they're adopting out most of the dogs right in their own backyards. Mm -hmm. And they don't need 
to transport as many dogs up north. Hmm. So while that's wonderful for the dogs and those communities, yeah. we're really happy. It also has really changed how we do the work here. The work and your funding. And our funding. Yeah, because absolutely. a lot of your funding, you would said, comes from the uh, adoption fees. It does. And that slows down and that funding isn't there. It slows down. You know, yeah. we have a, our adoption fees are really based on age. Yeah. The older the animal is, the lower the adoption fee. And we do that for several different reasons. The puppies and kittens are the most highly desirable. Mm -hmm. And the adoption fees cover the medical care and the care that goes into those animals with a little bit extra to help offset some of the extra care that the older sure. animals need. Yeah. Okay. So it all evens out and it balances out to provide the care. Yeah. But when we're seeing fewer dogs from the so south. So you and yeah. you guys and Bob Barker have put a little big dent in this, we, huh? We have. We've seen, <laughs> you know, we've seen the impact of yeah. it for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So that's great that you, you know, you, you know it, you got to figure out what to do about it. You've got a plan and you can move forward that way. Yeah. And that's yeah. great. So, so, um, anything um, beyond that like one of the things I like to ask people when I talk to them is what kind of weird or crazy or unexpected thing has happened to them and I don't know if I told you hmm. that I might ask you that I, I hope I did because yes. okay because you know it can surprise people but there's some funny stories you know there's funny stories you know there's always you think you've heard it all yeah and then during the day, inevitably, something comes up and you're like, well, I've never even thought about that before. Yeah. <laughs> what do we do in this situation? And sometimes it's just weird medical illnesses that yeah. pop up. And yeah. I mean, same thing with people, you know, just random things that happen. And how do we deal with that? Sometimes it's just unique scenarios of yeah. someone who wants a certain type of animal and needs yeah. it for these reasons. But I think the, the strangest thing, and I have not seen anything happen here, but all the staff tell me we have a ghost in the building. Oh no. Which a Is it a staff, human ghost? It's or? a human ghost. Okay, it's not right. an animal ghost. Right. It's a human. And apparently she likes to do um, front desk work and typing because that's where she always appears. And you haven't seen her? I have not seen her. Yeah. I've been alone at the shelter many times yeah. getting work done and I've never seen her, but other staff have. Yeah, I'm not so. a big fan of that. I think one of the shows people are watching now is The Haunting at Bly Manor yeah. or something like that. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of ghosts if by any means. I, I like Did you ever thing. look out the window and see a dog like staring in at you or something? I have not seen that. Okay. I've seen right. cats. Cats. <laughs> when you walk through, and especially at night if I'm yeah. here late, they yeah. just so you know, they just watch you. Yeah. <laughs> Their eyes follow you. Yeah. But yeah, no, I just I think hey, if there's a ghost here, she's yeah. here to protect the animals and I'm okay So with the that. community supports you, obviously. Yes. Businesses support you. Yep. And you do fundraisers and things like mm -hmm. that. And obviously you haven't been able to get out in the community as much. Right because of COVID. So if people are watching this and want to do something for you, what's the biggest impact? Is it bringing, you know, uh, blankets or food or is it money? Probably cash is king. It usually is. You but know what that, can people do to help you out if absolutely. they want to help? Yeah. And I mean, we <clears throat> have donors of, of every kind, mm -hmm. you know, kids who have lemonade stands and donate some money, you know, um, Girl Scout troops that make cat toys for us to give to the kitties. Oh, that's great. You know, all kinds of different things. And the creativity is always just amazing and wonderful. Um, certainly financial donations yeah. keep our, you know, they, they fund the things that aren't as, as sexy, yeah. you know, so keeping the lights on, yeah. keeping staff paid, you know, making sure that we're buying the medic medication that we need, all of that stuff. And it gives us that flexibility. So is there a place that they could go to find out what kinds of things they could do to help? Sure. So our website is um, www.savingpetsinmaine.org. It's not that. <laughs> GAHumane.org. Both of them work. <laughs> and um, there's a, a page, say, like, um, there's a wish list page. Yeah. So if people want to donate supplies, which we love. Yeah. Right now, paper towels and um, canned dog and cat food okay. are kind of really top on the list. Yeah. Um, paper towels always. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, just general pet food. We okay. also have a pet food pantry every week. So what isn't fid to the animals in the shelter we also give surplus out to the community who are struggling to feed oh, their that's own nice. animals so you're actually giving back to the community we are oh that's yes. great so um yeah well thank you katie i appreciate it and um you know if you guys anybody wants to donate anything to the greater andrew scog and humane society um they have a plan as you can tell we do. and if you go on the website it'll tell you what they need uh, for donations but if you want to call i would assume people would yep. pick up the phone, phone and talk to you there. Yep. Yep. or send an email i'm sure you can get an email off of the website yes. so well good luck to you and uh and uh enjoy the beautiful day thanks a little windy so and a little noisy <laughs> and there's a big dog barking over there yes, the whole there time is. but yes. it's been great thanks katie <laughs> thank you